Hello guys, welcome to the year 12th session. In the previous session, we have learned to make the simple queries as well as a query having the render fragment and the paging details. I have said GraphQL is a type language, but we have not focused on what is the type in the GraphQL. In this session, we will learn more about GraphQL schema and types. As we have seen in our previous query example, GraphQL is a fully depend on the fields that we are passing in the query because only those fields will be written by the server. For example, in this query, we have specified that we need to obtain the details for the viewer. Within that, we are just interested to obtain the ID, name, login and URL only. When we execute this query, we will get those four fields within the viewer. Some of you might have a question that how those fields were defined means what if I use any random field like the XYZ in the query. Then what will be happen? In this case, it will give an error as we have used a non field. In GraphQL, the server specify the schema which includes list of supported queries, mutation, fields, types, etc. In short, GraphQL schema is defined by the server and which is responsible for which types and fields are supported. The GraphQL type system describes the capability of the GraphQL server and it is used to determine whether the query is valid or not. As we know, GraphQL API can define in the various programming language, but all of those will be converted back into the GraphQL schema language, which is like the query that we have seen. Let's start with the types in a GraphQL schema. It is the most basic component of the GraphQL schema. It represents a kind of object that may be written by the server or passed to the server via the query variables. There are basically two kind of GraphQL type, scalar and object. It will further classify into the six kinds, which include the scalar, object, interface, union, enum, and input object type. Let's start with the scalar type. Scalar type represents the primitive value. GraphQL comes with the set of default scalar type out of the box. It includes the integer, float, string, boolean, and id. Along with this, we can also add the support for other scalar type such as a date, time, and URL. Or we can also omit the built-in scalar type too. For example, we can exclude the float type if we does not require it. To add a new scalar type, we need to use the scalar keyword and write the name of the type. Here in this example, we have added support for the date type, object type. It just represents a kind of object that can be fetched from the server and what field it has. It describes a tree of information written by the server. Here is an example of defining object type in a GraphQL. It uses the type keyword followed by the type name. Here it's a user. It contains the three fields that are ID, username, and mail ID. Type for those fields are defined by following colon sign. The type for ID is ID, and username and mail ID are a string type. Here all fields have the scatter type. But we can also define the other object type too on a field for nested data representation. In this example, I have added another field named contact details. It's a kind of contact details. It includes the sheet, city, state, and zip code. All of them are type of string. Type of field can be a scalar, object, enum, interface, or a union, or anything wrapping type of whose base type is those five. And field name must not begin with the uh, two underscore, as it was a reserve for the GraphQL introspection. We will continue to other types in the next session. Stay tuned for the next session.